Welcome to Jewels of Wisdom. Messages of Inspiration. With Host Mora Bhatshiva. Putting the wisdom of God back into our relationships. By discussing factors that adversely influence our culture's relationship with God as well as our growth and prosperity. The beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom, yeah, with all by getting get understanding. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 15. Wise words. Wisdom is the ability or result of an ability to think and act utilizing knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. Breaking the chains of mental slavery with the wisdom of God. From slaves, to Negro, to colored, to black, to Afro-American, to African-American, to Hebrew-Israelite, to Hebrew. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 10 Thanks for watching. Please take a second to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. Praise the power of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yisrael, the creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all that in them is my Savior, my Redeemer, even the Savior and Redeemer of Yisrael. Almighty Yah. I thank and praise you for another day, which brought another opportunity to praise your holy and righteous name and to repent of our four parents, parents, ours, our children, and our children, children's sins. For we have continually walked contrary to your laws from the days of our youth. For we have a whore's forehead and refuse to be ashamed. For we love the precepts, customs, laws, and traditions of men. But our leaders, our leaders cause the people to err, and they who are led of them are being destroyed, totally destroyed. Therefore, I pray to you, judge these false leaders as men and women who defile the marital bed by breaking the covenant of marriage through adultery, and as men and women who shed in some blood through murder. For the blood of your people are upon their hands, because they failed to warn the people of your impending wrath which is your impending judgment, and they fail to teach the people your laws. If a man walks therein, he should live. I thank and praise you for all your blessings, mercies, benefits, and grace that you have bestowed upon all of your servants, even the children of Israel. For truly you have been good to Israel, for your mercies endure forever. They are new each day, and I thank you for them. Selah. Shalom Aleikum, and hello to you all, and thanks for joining me. I am Mora Basheva, and welcome to my weekly segment called Juice of Wisdom, where my mission, goal, purpose, and slogan is to put the wisdom of God back into our relationships. And why, you may ask, because without it, there's no equity, justice, righteousness, nor prudence in our lives. All those who reject wisdom accept foolishness. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, The fear of God 
is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wisdom. Wisdom does not naturally come. Many people think that wisdom just naturally comes with age or with experience. Some think that they naturally have it. Not so, says Jehovah. You can only get it by seeking God. For wisdom belongs to God. And if you're ever to achieve it, the first thing you have to do is realize that you do not have it. It's time to take back our culture, our laws, our communities, our children, our nation, and most importantly, our relationship with the Most High Yah, the God of the Hebrews. The main focus of this channel is for us to renew or begin to form a new relationship with the God of our forefathers, the God of the Hebrews. I take verses and our chapters from the Holy Scriptures and show how relatable they are to us, our marriages, our families, our neighbors, and even our nation. I thank you all who have joined me today, as well as those who will see this lesson in the future. I pray that you all are well and in a good mood to learn about our forefathers' experiences with the God of the Hebrews. The Holy Scriptures used in this lesson will be in the description box below this video. If anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below the video. And please don't show hate nor leave disparaging comments at any time because they will be deleted. If I can't answer a question now, I will either reply to it later or address your question on the next video. Disclaimer, please be aware that I am not all-knowing nor omnipotent. Therefore, some things are hidden by God and he and he alone reveals the secret things of whom he pleases. Another disclaimer, for all those who have an aversion to the true words of God, Aversion. What is aversion? Aversion is a tendency or wish to avoid someone or something or a strong dislike. So if you have a strong dislike and are sensitive to the description of leaders being called blind, lazy, dumb dogs that cannot bark, then this is not the channel for you. For Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up that voice like a trumpet, and shoo my people their transgression in the house of Yaakov their sins. The people have to know that they are in sin before they can turn from sin. Time has run out for foolishness, lies, and deception, in Israel. I refuse to sugarcoat, water down, or put a foot around with the truth just to spare hurt feelings when our people are being destroyed at an alarming rate. I am held accountable to the Most High, the Most High only, for He only can bless or allow someone to bless, and He only can curse or allow someone to curse. Another disclaimer, also for those who are sensitive to me talking loud or talking fast or sensitive to me being angry about the status of our nation or having aversion to the truth, whether it pertains to the man or woman, then also, this is not the channel for you. People, it is not hard to change the channel. It is not hard to unsubscribe to a channel. Why do we make it a priority to make negative comments when you can just move on? With our people, if the thought comes to their narrow mind, it has to come out of their foolish mouth. I'm going to say that again. With our people, if the thought comes to their narrow-minded brain, then it has to come out of their foolish mouth. And I'm here for it. I will always respond to your comments with the wisdom and the word of God found in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Malachi. I'm going to lure you into a battle with the Most High Yah. And that's with his word. That is how I handle foolishness. And everyone is a scholar in these YouTube streets. Everyone has his or her own opinion on your channel and your lesson, and they want you to know how they feel about it. How about you start your own channel and teach your own lesson the way you desire to and stop going from channel to channel spewing foolishness? How about that? Most of y'all, I now ask you for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your words that can be found in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Malachi, and that it is not my intention nor my purpose to mislead, 
misguide nor misdirect anyone off the path of righteousness. Hallelujah. Today's lesson is taken from a series titled The Blind Leading the Blind. The, the leaders cause the people to err. Let's talk about the phrase, the blind leading the blind. The blind leading the blind is an idiom. What is an idiom? An idiom is a traditional way of saying something. According to dictionary.com, also Oxford Dictionary describes it as an expression and a metaphor in a form of a parallel phrase. It is used to describe a situation where a person ignorant of a given subject is getting advice and help from another person who is just as ignorant of the subject as him or herself. For Isaiah chapter 9 verse 15 says, For they that lead this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. And we as a nation are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, to know that we are walking contrary to the laws of God, for a lack of consciousness to understand the laws of God. And for a lack of wisdom to know that we have been hoodwinked and bamboozled by a Jewish and Christian lie. We lean to our own understanding and own interpretation of the Holy Scriptures. We follow dumb dogs that cannot nor will not bark, ever. Blind leaders who can't see nor do they want to see. And ignorant teachers who follow the precepts of man. For example, the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim man. No understanding of Holy Scriptures whatsoever. Even when leaders from our own nation speak out against the ideology and misinterpretation of our laws, they rebuke them or turn a blind eye and a deaf ear. Why, Israel? Why? We are wallowing in sin. And for some reason, we don't want to get up and turn away from sin, for we love sin. We want to believe that we can do all the sins that we choose to on this earth. And when we die, we go into heaven. That's a lie. That's a fairy tale. That's fantasy. You have to return, Israel. Return back to Yah. It's judgment time. That's what you see in these streets. Judgment time. Judgment in our homes, in our streets, in our communities. Judgment even among our nation. Today's lesson is about King Saul, taken from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 through 35. And he was disobedient, gullible, and foolish. A few weeks ago, it was the leader caused himself to err, and that king was King Uzziah. Now it is King Saul's turn. And no, he didn't cause the people to err. He allowed the people to cause him to err. How foolish and stupid to think that God would be okay with his lack of leadership and disobedience to his word. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 9 says, Fools make him mock at sin. Saul didn't think that what he did was that serious of a sin. He wanted Samuel to show a united front with him after he was called out for his disobedience, instead of going into repentance mode, he just had lip service. He was a king, a leader, an ineffective leader at that. Do you hear me, Israel? Y'all gave him a command to repay the Amalekites for the sins that they had inflicted on the Hebrews as they left Egypt when they were tired and vulnerable. The Amalekites attacked the most vulnerable of our people with no mercy nor empathy. So Saul was the king who was commanded to make the crooked things straight, to eliminate this nation, destroy everything, including oxen, sheep, lamb, ass, and property. But as usual, Man's word take precedent over God's words. Nothing new. Now let's get into the lesson. 1 Samuel chapter 15, starting at the first verse. Hallelujah. And it reads, Samuel also said unto Saul, 
Yah sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of Jehovah. Now this was the perfect opportunity for Saul to say unto Samuel, No, nah, man, I can't do that. I can't hearken unto the voice of God. Because that is what Saul eventually did. He didn't listen to God. He listened to the people instead. Again, God loses out. Our people listen to the voice of Paul, Luke, JC, John, each other, other nations, but refuse to listen to the voice of God. Why? Then when trouble arises, instead of going back to the person who led them astray, they go seek God for deliverance. Go figure. God said that he would do the same thing to you that you have done to him. And that is not hear your cries nor your prayers. Because you didn't hear him. You didn't listen to wisdom. You didn't listen to instruction. You didn't listen to the words of God. So he said, when all your pain and suffering and trouble comes upon you, I'm going to turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to you, Israel. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. We make a mockery out of sin, just like Saul did. But we think the most high is supposed to turn a blind eye and deaf ear to our sin. And then when we get in trouble, we're supposed to run to him and he's supposed to deliver us. No, not so says Jehovah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15 says, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Hallelujah. Make a mockery out of sin. Do any and everything under the sun. Don't know the most high. Why are we doing it? But when it goes south and goes astray, we run to the most high crying for deliverance. Now, who does that? Only somebody that wicked and evil does that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16. Wicked at heart. And we really think we getting over on the most high. We are the created of the creator. We always want to be more righteous than God. We always want to be equal to God. No mercy on each other. And we want the most high to have mercy upon us. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 16 says, Therefore pray not thou for this people. I told Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. Don't even lift up a cry, nor a prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Okay, you start praying for them if you want to, Jeremiah. I'm not going to even listen to you. You know how hard-headed these people are, how wicked and evil they are. Evil, full of sin. Don't want to hear me. So don't you even pray for them. Don't you even come to me crying, talking about what they're going through. They brought it on themselves. Wicked generation, evil. Children in whom there's no faith. Also, let's go to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. Full of sin. And it reads, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he would not hear. That's why he won't hear us. When we cry to him, Israel, we're full of sin. We don't think we did anything wrong. We don't think we walk contrary to the laws of God because we over here in modern day Egypt. You have dumb dogs teaching that the laws are done away with other dumb dogs saying we can't kick them laws outside the land. But you better not tell them they can't have more than one wife. You got a problem. There's a problem with that. Pick and choose what they want to keep and what they don't want to keep. And still hadn't realized. They're so dumb and stupid. Still hadn't realized that that's why we're in the predicament we're in now. That's why sin masquerading as crime is rampant in our neighborhoods, our communities, our homes. It's judgment time, Israel. We're being judged for not following the precepts and laws of God. We're being judged. He has his own laws, his own statutes, his own ordinances. And just because you don't keep them 
it doesn't negate the fact that you are being judged by them. The most high is just, and I love it. That'll teach you. That'll teach you about listening to the precepts of man. But some of our people are so stubborn that they will never understand justice. The most high wrong. He shouldn't have did that. I don't know why he did that to that child. I don't know why he did that to that sister. I don't know why he did that to that brother. But some of our people are so stubborn that they will never understand justice. They see themselves as being victims, victims for life. I say it was bad luck. No, it's the judgment of God. Fools fail to understand judgment. Fools fail to recognize judgment. It's judgment time, Israel. It's judgment time. We've been playing around and pussyfooting around with these laws for so long. Thinking we got away with something. The Most High is judging us. His judgments are throughout this earth. Let's go to verse 2 of 1 Samuel chapter 15. Verse 2 of 1 Samuel chapter 15 reads, Thus says Yahweh host, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he lay wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Let's talk about the sins that Amalek did. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 through 19. People who don't know history tend to judge God for being heartless, evil, unjust, and choose to have a short memory about the wickedness and evil that they either did to others or that others have done to our nation. But we have a long memory when it comes to someone doing us wrong. Go figure. When judgment comes knocking on our door, then we are surprised, angry, indignant. I want to pretend that we don't know why it is happening. So let's go back in history to see what this nation did. Then you will see the judgment of the Most High is just. Because he said, kill everything. People have a problem with that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't serve no God that, that, that kill innocent women and children. Never mind the men, but I, I just can't, I can't see myself serving a deity like that. You don't know justice then if you can't see yourself serving a God such as our God. He is just. We the one unjust, more righteous than God. want to judge him. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 through 19. Remember what Amalek did unto thee. By the way, when you were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee. Even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Remember that. The people were tired, weary. And he didn't even think about God, didn't even fear God when he decided to kill these people. Hadn't done anything to them. He decided to get his army together. Let's go and attack them. I know they ought to be tired. They just left Egypt. Went through all the hell in Egypt, so we're going to add to it. And that's what people do in our lives. They'll see you going through something. Well, let me add to it. She already down. Let me make sure she stays down. They'll attack you when you're feeble and when you're weary and when you're sick and when you're tired. Think about that. It's always been a playbook of wicked people. They don't fear the most high. No fear whatsoever. They don't have no empathy nor no mercy. Therefore, verse 19, therefore it shall be when Yah thy God had given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which Yah thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. He made sure, told Moses to write it down in a book. I don't want you guys to forget what he did. I mean, and many of us. Just like Amalek, many of us don't fear God. That is why hell is in our homes. Hell is in our homes, in our lives, on our jobs, and in our neighborhoods. No fear whatsoever. Because if we did, then we would be prospering as a nation, as a community, as a family, and as a congregation. Every man and woman and child among Israel know everything. 
say any and everything while saying nothing at all. Just empty words that will profit them nothing. Amalek didn't have any mercy. Amalek didn't have any mercy on our people. So God told Saul not to have mercy on them. This is judgment. This is righteous judgment, Israel. This is justice. God just delivered our forefathers from Egypt after Pharaoh pursued them. And then this foolishness happened. You see how people use an opportunity to attack you when you are weary, tired, distracted, or vulnerable? No mercy. And don't think that people among us, including our own family and friends, would not have mercy on us. These are the times that we live in. Y'all said it in Deuteronomy chapter 28. What's going to happen? In verse 19, this was passed down. And he said, thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. This was passed down from generation to generation. Y'all told Moshe to write it down for a memorial in a book so that future generations wouldn't forget it. But you know we have a short memory, full of the world. So let's go to Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16, so I can remind you of what y'all said. He, he, he was wrong. Innocent children and, and women doing it, just killing them. Wrong. Did they go back in history and see what they did to us? Were they not wrong? One side of justice. They were right in what they did, but Israel were wrong in what they did. Come on now, Israel. Make it make sense. If it doesn't make sense, it's nonsensical. Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yah said to Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. I will. And the most out of them laugh. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because Yah has sworn that Yah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And Yah never forgot what nations have done to us, even at this moment. And nor what we have done to each other. Cause many to go astray. Cause many to turn their backs on the Most High. For the precepts of Paul and the precepts and ideology of JC and Allah and whomever. Our people are serving. Now back to 1 Samuel chapter 15 and pick up at the third verse. I mean, evil. They attack the vulnerable of our people. So it was judgment time. Most I gave Saul a commandment. Verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy some of all that they have and spare the best that they have but slay both man and woman except the king infant and suckling but keep the best of the ox and sheep camel and ass come on Israel that is not what God said he said now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not but slay both but slay both man and woman, 
infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Destroy everything, Saul. And if you didn't understand what the word utterly destroy meant, then you should have asked for clarification. Sometimes we get an idea in our mind that we understand what someone meant to say instead of understanding what they actually said. There's nothing wrong with asking for clarification. It shows wisdom. But for some odd reason, we have a hearing problem when it comes to the word of God. We rationalize. Add to, I take away from his word because we don't want to do it. Let's be real. Or we don't understand it. Or we have been mistaught wrong for so long. It pains us to do what is right. I, I just can't do it. It just don't sound right. Therefore, we wallow in our sins because it doesn't sound right. It's not an excuse not to do what just says y'all because it doesn't sound right to you. I have seen comments on YouTube and other online Bibles commenting on how evil this God is for killing innocent women, men, and children. And this is the reason why they don't believe in God nor any deity. No one seems to remember what the forefathers of Amalek did to our forefathers. I mean, if it comes up, it comes out of our mouth. Why do people go to other people's channel page or whatever social media account they have just to make these comments, spewing negativity, spewing lies, and spewing hatred? Just move on. It is so easy not to click on a thumbnail, but no, they have to be heard. They are either lonely, miserable, ignorant, evil, wicked, mistaught, or just blind. If you're always going to someone else's channel just to spew rhetoric, then that is you. All these scholars on YouTube worrying about the wrong things that will profit them nothing. Let that sink in. Just keep the law and God will return to us a pure language, a pure heart, a pure mind, and a pure form of worship. But no, I have to let you know how I feel and that you are not crossing your T's right. You're not dotting your eyes correctly. No, one person doesn't know it all. And most of us have been mistaught and want to spread their foolishness and can't even back it up with holy scriptures. If you want to come to my channel with that foolishness, then be prepared to back it up with Holy Scriptures. If not, then I don't want to hear it. It's a distraction and a waste of my time. I will tell you guys a secret because obviously people seem to be ignorant of the fact that YouTube is free. So create your own channel and teach from the imagination of your own wicked heart and stay off my channel because you will be blocked and your comments will be deleted. Unlike the dumb dogs that you listen to, I don't get paid to teach the word of God. So I don't need tithing money, nor donations. I am beholden to God. Therefore, it is easy for me to block people and delete their comments and move on. Now, verses four through six. I mean, they teach from the imagination of their own heart. No understanding. It was clear. It was a commandment. Not an option. It was a commandment to King Saul to utterly destroy everything. You don't think those folks had all those cattle and stuff sacrificing to their deities? Their idols? But now they want to take them and then want to say they're going to sacrifice to our Elohim. Something that's defiled in a defiled land, defiled people, defiled property, and you want to come bring it back. Uh, uh, no, that stuff is good, too good. Full of the world. Verses 4 through 6. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them into to lay him 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Yehuda. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart. Get you down from among the Malachites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye shewed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. Unlike the Amalekites, they did it. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. 
a word to the wise is sufficient. And they heed the word that Saul gave them. God didn't destroy the Kenites, even though they lived among the Malachites. But no, people with evilness and evil intentions want to paint God as being unfair, unjust, and evil. And I bet the people who say this foolishness is full of wickedness and evil themselves. Yes, let's talk about the evil and wickedness that you are doing and have done. You see, Yisrael, the Holy Scriptures, is our moral compass. So how can a person be holy, righteous, and just? without the laws of God. He or she can. It's impossible. But they want to judge God. Tell him how wrong he is for doing this. Kill everything. Destroy everything. What, what, the, what the cattle do? What, 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 the, what the children do? The most I know is the end from the beginning. Go judge him. Tell him what to do. What's wrong with people? They're all out of order and all out of place. We are the created of the creator. We're not the creator. We don't get to tell him what to do and how to do it. Verses 7 through 9. And Saul smoked the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that he is over against Egypt. And he took Agog, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agog and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. How they can determine what was good? You notice it said, Saul and the people spared our God. Now, why would they do that? He is the head, the leader. He should have been the first to go down. The Amalekites were a sinful and defiled nation, but our people, being full of greed, decided, man, all these fat oxen, all these good-looking lambs, sheep, and fatness, man, I just, I just can't get rid of it. I can't let it go. I'm going to keep it for myself. Come over and get these Gucci clothes and Nike shoes. Man, you're crazy if you want to destroy all this good stuff. Full of the world. Nothing new under the sun. This is the perfect time to read Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. So we think we know better than God. Why well, he just said destroy everything because we thought in our eyes it looked good. No, I just can't do it. It, 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 it. it didn't look too good. It's like telling somebody to get rid of your Gucci clothes. Your Louis Vuitton. They have a hard time departing with these Name brand items being branded. They brand our people back in slavery and we still being branded up today. Love wearing somebody else's brand on our clothing. Love wearing somebody else's brand on our bodies. Branded. We love being branded. I, I just can't let it go. I can't wear nothing generic. You got to be name brand. Go broke. Trying to put somebody else's name on their body. Shame. No one understands it. But we more righteous than God. We get to tell him how to run things. That he unrighteous. He unjust. I'll tell you why he does what he does. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said Jehovah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's why. You'll never understand the justice of the Most High. You'll never understand the mercy of the Most High. We can't begin to know why God does what he does. But one thing that I do know is that is his prerogative to do as he pleases. We are all out of place. All out of line. Man had always, always wanted to be equal to a more important than God. God said this, but, 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 but Paul said this. I won't know who is going to tell God, no, don't do this. Or who will stop him from doing his will. Come on with it, Isaiah. We get ready to light up Isaiah. 
Tell the truth and shame Satan. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. Peter went some Isaiah. It says, Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work on who shall let it. That's Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. That's what I'm talking about, Isaiah. Oh, you high and mighty scholars, more righteous than God people. Tell God what to do. Who can teach and who can't teach? A woman ain't got no being up there teaching. And what they can teach and what they can't teach. For it reads, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little. Yes. Don't tell God what to do. Listening to the precepts of man. Reading those outside books. Listening to man tell us what is wrong in the Holy Scriptures. How about that? No. You need to be telling the people what is wrong with the New Testament. That's what you need to be telling them. They wish to tear down the Holy Scriptures in order to build up the New Testament. A foundation built on lies. Because Holy Scriptures don't support the New Testament whatsoever. I need to write books about any and everything God has said in favor of what Paul and J.C. and John had said. That's what it's all about. That is one of the conspiracies that I will be speaking on this coming day five, commonly called Thursday, with special guest Moira Yeshaya, discussing the history of these nations that have and are still conspiring against us and the Most High Yah. But instead of us fighting these nations, we fight each other because the truth hurts and we don't want to change. We are comfortable in sin and we love it. Go back to 1 Samuel. Pick up at verses 10 and 11. Don't want to change. So in order for me to feel righteous, I'm going to tear down the Holy Scriptures. Verses 10 and 11. Then came the word of Yah unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and had not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto Yah all night. How quickly we forget where we came from when we get in the position of leadership or authority. Saul was wrong, wrong, dead wrong, and the people were wrong. But didn't you know about Exodus chapter 23, verse 2, Saul? You should have known about this because all kings were required. They were commanded to write his own copy of the book of the law. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18. And it says, it, it shall be. It was an option. It shall be when he sit it up on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest and Levites. So you should have known about Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. And let's go there. And it says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. It was judgment time for the Amalekites, Saul. It was judgment time. And you were the king who was chosen to bring this judgment from the Most High Yah. But you followed the people to do evil. And you're the king. You're the leader. Think about that. The leader following the people. The people caused the leader to air. You're the king, Saul. What's wrong with that picture, Saul? Why were you following the people? You're not supposed to follow a mother too to do evil and decline at the minute to rest judgment. And that's what you did. It was judgment for all of the Malachites, including the king, our God. But you want to spare him and keep him alive. And you want to spare all the property. But anything that was deformed or distasteful, you decide, well, we don't want that. They got a crooked leg, 
uh, uh, it just don't look right. That, that lamb, get rid of that lamb. You can go and kill that one. Picking and choosing. And the most High said destroy everything utterly. What do you think utterly means? You were wrong, Saul. You were wrong. You became haughty. You didn't think you did anything wrong. And when the most I took the kingship out of your future son's hand and took it from you and gave it to your neighbor who was King David, you got a problem with that. Zero accountability. Didn't want to try to conspire to kill David. What did David do? See his last at your doorstep. I mean, Saul, you not only followed the people, but you made an excuse for why you did it. No repentance. When Nathan told David what he had done, there was immediate repentance. And some blind leaders talk about, I don't know why God would say that David was a man after his own heart. And he said there committed adultery with another man. Why? Well, pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the word, and you will see why, dumb dog. Samuel is a man who loves his people. Unfortunately, he had to see Eli and his sons die because Eli's sons didn't know God. Even though their father was a priest, then Eli put the love of his sons over his love and devotion to God. He knew his sons were whoremongers, greedy, and strong arming the people, and still didn't sit them down, but allowed that evil to fester. So much so, people hated offering to God. So God said, since you don't want to take care of Eli, I'll take care of this matter. I got this. And he destroyed that family of priests and allowed a handful to live only to beg for the priesthood in the years to come. For some reason, we think God needs us. He ought to be glad I'm serving him. Have serving him. I'm not serving him at all in your narrow-minded brain. And if you feel that way, you are full of pride and deceit. I mean, wrong. Outright wrong. No excuses. The people. The people, and you the leader, and the leader following the people. Sound like over here, over here in the United States, that's what it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be serving the people when they get into elected office, but they serve themselves. So you were so you supposed to be serving the most high, you serve the people. Verses 12, 13, and 14. All out of line. The first king and got it wrong. And had a problem with David. Had a problem with the words of the Most High Yah. I, I just can't do that. And what purpose was it for them to keep the king alive? I still want to know that. The showcase? Look what we did. We got the king. We got the king. We got the big gun, the top gun, the nacho, the head. We got it. We started everything. Well, we kept some of the good stuff, though. You want some of this stuff? Come on, get some of this loot, some of this booty. Come on. It's enough for everybody. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 12, 13, and 14. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of Yah, I have performed the commandment of Yah. Look at it. Bragging about what he didn't do, and he thought he did do. And Samuel said, Okay, then, what's going on here? What mean it then, this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears? I didn't see all this before you went to war against the Amalekites. Now, all of a sudden, all these sheep, I'm here, and the lowing of the oxen, which I hear? Come on now, Saul. What is going on here? Explain yourself, King Saul. You are mighty sure of yourself, King Saul. 
bragging about what you have done and your ego won't allow you to see that you fail. You fail miserably. You were disobedient to the command of Yah. I mean, he was proudly talking about you have to have a the command of Yah. I mean, you see how blind we are? He couldn't even see that he was wrong. Wrong. All out of order. Verse 15. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Malachites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto Jehovah thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Saul, is this what God said? We have a comprehension problem here, Saul. We hear what we want to hear and do what we want to do, King Saul. And who is today, King Saul? The commandment was for you to go destroy everything. And you and the people to destroy everything. But they, who is they, King Saul? Aren't you the leader? And what did you say when they did all of this, King Saul? Did you stop them? Did you try to stop them? You the leader, you the king. They told Samuel they want a king like the rest of the nations. It's about to be listening to this king. So what's the problem now? They want a king. They don't want to respect the king. Come on now. They asked for a king. The most I told them what the manner of the king and what he would do to them and their children. And they said, no, we still want a king. But then they got their wish. They got that desire for a king, and they still want to listen to you? Are you afraid to say anything? You start to make excuses like Aaron when Moses asked him about the golden calf. You guys remember what Aaron said? Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 32 and refresh your memory. Verses 21 and 22. Have a lapse of memory. All these people making excuses. Putting it on a paper. Aaron knew better. King Saul knew better. But it's the people's fault. Verse 21. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? It was a sin. And look at Aaron's response. Verse 22. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. No accountability. And they hard is set on mischief. But you're the leader. You were in charge when Moses left. You're supposed to tell them they were wrong. Not participate in the wrong. No accountability. Now back to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Pick up at the 16th verse. It's always the people. But the leaders caused them to err. But in this lesson. Saul catered to the people and let the people cause him to err. Gullible. Let's describe what is gullible. Because that's what he was, gullible. Oxford Dictionary describes gullible as easily deceived or easily being led. And that was King Saul, led by the people. He being the first king, I guess he wanted to please the people more than pleasing God. A people pleaser. Verses 16, 17, 18, and 19. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what Yah has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. I heard that. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And Yah anointed thee king over Israel. And Yah sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners. They were sinners, the Malachites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of Yah, but didst spy upon the spoil, and didst eat in the sight of Yah? You, you decided that your wisdom knowledge and understanding of how to deal with the Amalekites were more sufficient than God's King Saul. Taking property you were commanded to destroy. Keeping alive a person you were commanded to kill. Then allowed the people to influence you to disobey the commandment of God. Go figure. And pay special attention to the next verse. 
That lets us know that he didn't regret what he had done. And pride go up before destruction. He couldn't see that he was wrong. In Saul's eyes, God is the one that is wrong. Saul, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. Let's go there. And it says, when wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasing unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. Saul, those people spoke forward things. They stroke your ego, and you were too ready and too eager to oblige them. A people pleaser. Forgot all about what thus says Yah. All about what he said. Had a problem with what Samuel told you. Had a problem with the commandment of Yah. Because you want to do it your way. Back to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of Yah, and have gone the way which Yah sent me, and have brought our God, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Where are you getting on me for, Samuel? I did what God told me to do. You are wrong, Samuel. You got it wrong from God. God didn't tell you that to do that, to, to kill everything. All that good stuff them folks had. I did what I was supposed to do. You just didn't get it. No repentance, no remorse, and no accountability. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Let's go there. Talks about pride. You got a little pride going on with you too, King Saul. And it says, pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before it fall. And Saul and his three sons were killed in 1 Samuel chapter 31. But David was set up during the last years of Saul's life to be the future king. And therefore, Saul sought to kill David until Yah took him on out of there. Go back to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 21, 22, and 23. But the people took up the spoil, sheep and oxen the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto Jehovah thy God in Gilgal. But you're the king, Saul. A weak one at that. When do a king take orders from the people, King Saul? Passing the buck, huh, King Saul? Blaming it on the people, King Saul. But King Saul, did you try to stop the people? What did you say to the people? And what did the people say back to you, King Saul? You told them they couldn't take their property of the Amalekites. Huh, Saul? I'm listening. Come with it. I hear crickets, King Saul. No accountability. The people took it. You tell the people they were wrong? You cry out against the people? You go to the most high on the people? Verse 22. And Samuel said, Jehovah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yah. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams, King Saul. Saul, God demands obedience and he doesn't need your oxen, especially the defiled oxen, sheep, and other property that belong to the Amalekites. For the whole earth belongs to him. That is why no one takes Here's a hard property to the grave with them. Verse 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yah, he had also rejected thee from being king, King Saul. Your sins are equal to that of witchcraft and idolatry. God said, don't allow a witch to live in Exodus chapter 22, verse 18. And it says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. It's a death penalty. 
So what you did was a death penalty. And we know how God feels about worshiping idols. It is the first on the list of the Ten Commandments. So what you did is it's equal to witchcraft and idolatry and iniquity. We don't think what we do is sinful behavior. We think the Most High is all right with what we're doing because we want to justify the fact we over here in captivity. The most I understand, I have to lie. I have to steal. I have to cheat. That's a lie. You choose to do it. Back to 1 Samuel, verses 24 and 25. We make conscious choices to be faithful or not faithful to the most high. Make conscious choices to be faithful or unfaithful to the most high. Those are our choices. The most I put before us, life and death, good and evil. We choose. We choose the old past. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of Yah and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. No. Now, wait a minute, Saul. Do you just say in verse 20 that you obeyed the voice of Yah? So now you are still blaming the people for your sin because you fear them? No accountability. If you fear the people so much as you claim you did, then why are you snitching on them now? You're not afraid that they're going to catch you out somewhere and stone you to death? Snitches get stitches? Huh, King Saul? Those people were telling you what a great job you did. How great you were. Now it's time to celebrate with this boy. And you fell for the okie doke. They were speaking those fool words. Built you up on the hang you out to dry. Verse 25. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship Yah. How can a man pardon his sin against Yah? Even Eli, the priest, understood that. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 25. I'm going to hit the book of Samuel now. And it says, if one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against Yah, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because Yah would slay them. Just like he plans to slay Saul and his three sons. He sinned against the Most High, and he want a man to pardon that sin. Back to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 26. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of Yah, and Yah had rejected thee from being king over Israel. Why do you want me to go and prop you up, seeing that you caused your own downfall, King Saul? You did this to yourself. Now you want me to go show a united front with you in front of the people, and you walk contrary to God? No, 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 King Saul. I am on God's side. You're on your own, King Saul. Let the people take care of you. Since you feared the people, you loved them so much. Verses 27 through 31. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. That means it tore. And Samuel said unto him, Yah had rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and had given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And that neighbor was King David. And also, the strength of Israel will not lie. Absolutely not lie, nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Saul, it's going to happen. And nothing you're going to say is going to change it. That's why he tried to kill David. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now. I pray thee before the elders of my people and before Israel and turn again with me that I may worship Yah thy God. No, Saul, I am against those who are against God. And we as a people should show the same united front with our Elohim as Samuel did with King Saul. No excuses. We are loyal to family and friends, but we turn our backs on God for anything we ask for and we didn't get. 
just because God didn't give it to me when I wanted to get it. I, I, I can't serve no God like that. Just because he let it happen to my friend, my wife, my sister, my cousin, they're responsible for their own sins. I, I, I just can't serve no God like that. It is everything to make excuses for why they don't want to walk in the commandments of Yah. Because it's in their wicked heart to be full of the world and do as the world is doing. Verses 31 through 35. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped Yah. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me, Agog, the king of the Amalekites. And Agog came unto him delicately, and Agog said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. He thought he survived death. He thought death has passed. So I'm in the clear now. All that wickedness and evil you did. And he thought he was in the clear. It's gone. I, they ain't gonna kill me now. All that time I've been, I've been alive. And Samuel said, As that sword had made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agog in pieces before Yah in Gilgal. But I wonder what King Saul said when he saw that, if he saw it. He told him to bring him here. He thought that the death sentence had already passed. He thought he was in the clear. Surely the bitterness of death is past. Samuel let him know now it's judgment time. You don't get off that easy. He thought he was going to get off scot-free because they kept him alive. They were foolish for them to do that. It was sinful for them to do it. Samuel let him know, I'm about judgment. I'm about the most high. I'm about the most high judgment. And the most high is just. So no, you don't get off scot-free, King our God. Samuel said, not over my dead body. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and Yah repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. It's a shame when God puts us in a position of authority or leadership, especially when we ourselves didn't even think that we deserved it. But we allow others to determine our path, to lead us off the path of righteousness, to lead us astray, to cause a division between us and our Elohim. Israel, there's only two reasons that a person comes into your life and wisdom will teach you what that reason is. That either come to your life to bless you or to curse you. Hosea chapter 14 verse 9 says, Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of Yah are right, Israel, and the just shall walk in them. Not fall in them, not stumble in them, but walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. King Saul did just that. He stumbled and fell. We as a nation have stumbled and fallen in our iniquity. I mean, for some reason or another, we just can't get up. We have a hard time getting up. Hosea chapter 14 verse 1 says, O oh, Israel, return unto Yah thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Hallelujah. I give all honor, all glory, and all praises to you, Most High Yah, also known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, who is the Elohim of our forefathers, the Holy One of Israel, our forefathers God, the God of the Hebrews. As this Bible study has come to a close, I thank and praise you for giving us the opportunity to learn, the capacity to understand, and the willingness to increase our knowledge of your laws through the testimonies of your prophets, the ancient messengers of our forefathers, the opportunity to teach your word, which are your laws, and for us to be a light and to delight in your laws, that if a man walks therein, he should live. I pray that you protect us, guide us, and strengthen us with all the necessary tools to encounter our trials and tribulations each day. I thank you for the knowledge we obtain in class and that you bless us to be able to impart our knowledge for the benefit of others as we serve you.
Help us to be prepared for the challenges we face each day, to be open to giving of oneself to further your service, to be responsible in all we do, to be accepting of our differences, to be kind in our thoughts and words, to be aware of our talents that can be used to glorify you in righteousness and to help us be the best possible version of ourselves. I thank you for imparting me with this knowledge to bring forth unto your people, the children of Israel. I pray you continuously bless me with the skills, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, which is needed to teach this Bible study, and that you bless all of us exponentially for setting aside time each week to study your holy scriptures. May you continue to bless and guide us as we leave this class, and may the things we learned remain in our day-to-day -day activities. I thank you for all the blessings mercies, benefits, and grace that you have bestowed upon all of your servants, even the children of Israel. For truly, you've been good to Israel, for your mercy endures forever. They are new each day, and I thank you for them. Selah. Putting God back into our relationships. Weekly Bible Study with Morabat Shiva, on Thursdays at 7 to 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Jewels of Wisdom Messages of Inspiration Putting the Wisdom of God Back into Our Relationships With Host Morabat Shiva Sundays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all that getting get understanding. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 Thanks for watching. Share, like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications.